My first guest starred in Home Alone, became uh, the most famous child actor in the world by the age of 10. He's now 20. That is double. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> now, after six years off, he's starring in a play called uh, Madame Melville at the Promenade Theater in New York. I said Promenade, but he's a theater guy now. He corrected me. It's Promenade. <laughs> Please welcome Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Now, what is short for Macaulay? Is it Mac? The guys? Yeah, you can call me Mac. Call you Mac. Okay, there that's go. good. Mac sounds cool. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. How you been? All right? Yeah, I've been doing good, doing good, yeah. doing my play. Because you were kind of out of the limelight for a while. You were a big star at, what, was it 10? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it just took six years off trying to figure out everything, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, yeah. <laughs> funny enough. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So you retired when you were how old? Uh, 14. 14? How many 14 year olds wouldn't love to retire? Hey, That's there me. you go, there you go. <laughs> so, so what did you do, okay? You retired, you're, you're 14. <laughs> uh, I don't know, went to school. Yeah. I mean, I had never really done a full year of school before in my life. Uh, well, I haven't either, so well, that's, you know. Uh, yeah. there you go. Now, so what is that like? Did you go into a situation, did you go into a school with other kids? I mean, was it weird? Uh, yeah, I went to a place called the Professional Children's School. Oh, that sounds really annoying. Yeah, very. <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, wasn't professional, there was no children there, and it was barely a school. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, SAB ballerinas and yeah. Juilliard, uh, you know, prodigy musicians, you know, things yeah. like that. And there must have been annoying parents at those schools. Yes, there, there no. could be. <laughs> My son is very good. Did you like, did you, I assume you didn't like school. Uh, I had a good time. I mean, I, yeah. I went, uh, for mainly social reasons. Right. Yeah, you know, went there just to hang out and make friends and stuff like that because I really didn't have the time to do it before. And I decided to go to high school. I'd finally, you know, got past eighth grade and I finally got to a point in my life where I could say I didn't want to do it anymore. I just wanted to go to school, so right. I did. <laughs> How did other kids treat you? Was it weird? I mean, did... Uh, initially, yeah. I mean, uh, it's funny, like, uh, when I met my wife, uh, I met my wife at school. And what happened was I went around introducing myself, you know, and saying, hi, you know, my name is Mac, nice to meet you, welcome to the school. And then I'll go, duh, you know? And so that went on for a little while. And so when I eventually meet my wife, I go, hi, my name is Mac, my, you know, I said, hi, welcome to the school. And I didn't say my name. And she got, uh, she thought I was such a jerk for doing that. And I don't know, it was, it was just funny. But all women think the guy they're gonna marry is a jerk the first day they meet them. Yeah, that's, that's what I found. They never marry the guy that's cool. <laughs> that's yes. the guy they go out with, and exactly. they marry you later marry on. The jerk. That. Yeah, yeah, because you always, because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, what, I really like this one, so you always screw it up. So that's, of course. That's, that's actually, <laughs> now you got married at what, 17? 17. It's like your whole life is yeah. accelerated. I guess so, I guess you can put it so that way. So you retired at 14. <laughs> I got married at 70. So at this rate, you should be dead by 22. So. <laughs> you only have like another 18 months to live. Uh oh, better have some fun while I can. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, that, that does seem, that does seem, I mean, I kind of understand, but ex explain to me why, why I, it's you so know, young to get married. We were high school sweethearts. We, uh, we loved each other very much. Yeah. And, uh, and this is how we de decided to convey our love. We got married. Yeah. Uh, you know, she broke up with me. We went out four times. She broke up with me three times before. Right. Until finally we were going out that last time, I, you know, pinned her down and said, okay, you know, marry me now before you break up with me again. So she did. Uh, did you actually <laughs> pin her down this time? <laughs> Not actually, no. <laughs> well, now, are you, are you still married? I, I know you. Yes, no, I'm still married. Okay. I mean, we're still good friends and we talk all the time. Yeah. And she's a wonderful woman. And I wouldn't take it back for anything in the world. Right. And she's one of my best friends in the world. And I'm, you know, I'm so glad to have her in my life. Well, I mean, it's interesting to just, you know, in some ways you get envious of all the success. In other ways, you're jealous. I feel that I got to experience a lot of things that seem mundane to me now that you, you never did. You know, especially doing things at 17, I wasn't able to do <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, it was a little weird. But, you know, I just, I just had to take the time to be, uh, you know, normal. Right. I guess, and just kind of take a step back. So, I mean, I really, I really couldn't remember a time where people weren't gawking at me and there weren't people in the bushes with cameras and stuff like that. Yeah, because so. it was really... Plus, you had the situation with your dad. I know mm -hmm. that was pretty overbearing and, and you're... Yeah, no, he was a bit of an overbearing person. And yeah. 
uh, you know, it, it got to the point when he wasn't around anymore where I could actually say I didn't want to work anymore because it became not fun. I loved it when I was young. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was a really uh, great thing for me. I mean, holy cow, you're doing a movie. You know, right. it's, you know when you're six years old, that's, it's amazing. And after a while, it became not fun. It became something I didn't, I didn't want to do anymore. I'm, and I think I had to take these six years to try to figure out that this is maybe yeah. what I wanted to do again. And it's funny. It's kind of my life is going full circle again. Is there a point when you realize my dad's wrong? Because you always side with your dad. It's your dad. I mean, was there some point in your life where you went, hey, wait a minute, I think my dad's going too far here. Was that, that's got to be the most confusing time in the world. Right? Yeah, I mean, I always knew. I mean, I understood that he was trying to do everything in the... In, the interest of his family, trying to secure a uh, financial future and a career, I guess, for his eight-year-old, ten-year-old ten kid or whatever. Uh, I mean, I could understand that, but at the same time, I think, you know, I don't think he knew how many bridges he was burning at the same yeah, time. Yeah. And is your financial future, I'm not asking how much money you have, but I mean, is it good? Do you have I'm a, fine, yeah. Do you have a situation? <laughs> well, you always feel sorry, because you always hear these horrible stories about child stars, oh, and I they could... get to be 21, and they realize they have a dollar eighty in the bank. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> No, no, uh, no, actually, they were very smart. They put everything yeah. in a bank account that yeah. I couldn't even touch till I turned 18. Right. So, you know, and they didn't even tell me how much I had. So right. I turned 18 and I go to my accountant's office, you know, and they, uh, you know, lay a piece of paper in front of me and go, boom, this is how much you have. And it's a, it's a little surprising. Mm, that's pretty good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So there you go. So, no, I mean, I wasn't like, you know, squatting in the corner doing heroin and stuff like that. No, and no, no. Spitting vodka on the wall and throwing matches everywhere. You know, I, I wasn't doing any spitting of those Spitting vodka on the wall yeah, and throwing go. matches. <laughs> and I'm going to try that when I get home. I didn't even know about that one. There that, you go. That shows how unhip I am. I didn't even know about this one. But, uh, now, tell me no, about I this. mean, I wasn't doing any of those cliche yeah. kind of things. Yeah. You know, I was just kind of, I was watching television. I was very boring. But, I mean, I wanted to be boring. I kind of made it a point to, to be boring. Yeah. Now, the play, you've gotten wonderful reviews in the New York Times. Yeah, no. Because usually people in your position, they savage. They can't wait till you get to be 17 or 18 and you're an adult, and then they just rip you apart. But the New York Times just get, give you wonderful reviews. Yeah, no, it was uh, What is the play about? Cool thing. Uh, it's a play. Uh, it's a, uh, it's, I guess you can say it's a coming-of-age play. It's a 15-year-old boy in 1966 in Paris. He, uh... He has this love moment with his teacher, his literature teacher. You sure it's Paris and not Seattle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful moment uh, between two people. You know, it's a, it's, it's a play about need, and it's yeah. a play about how these people, how they're, you know, how these pieces in life, yeah. how they fit together, and how these two and three misshaped pieces kind of all fit together for about two days in this wonderful way. Yeah. Do you still like show business? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm having a good time. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it for myself now. I'm right. not doing it for anybody else. Right. So and you're going to come back and make some more movies? And yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I'm just looking, you know, to have a good time and just do good material with good people. Well, it's good. It's it good is. to see you back. Yeah, thank Welcome you. back, buddy. Macaulay Culkin. Nice job. Be right back with Greg Fitzsimmons right after this.